Courtney Love has had her fair share of feuds over the years, some of which I've covered, including her one with Marilyn Manson, Candlebox, the former members of Nirvana, Kathleen Hanna, and even the makers of Guitar Hero. In 1991, her alternative rock band Hole would release their debut album Pretty on the Inside. The album would contain a track named Sassy, which included an angry voicemail left on Courtney Love's answering machine by the Nymphs frontwoman Inger Laurie. The Nymphs would sign to Geffen Records in 1989, the same label that Hole was on, begging a nearly million dollar deal. But the band grew frustrated. The first album that the Nymphs recorded for Geffen would be put on hold, and they weren't allowed to play live shows. Couple this with the fact that Laurie was depressed and struggling with drug addiction, it was only a matter of time before things escalated. Geffen A&R man Tom Zutat, who most famously signed Guns N' Roses, and the Nymphs would claim that each time studio sessions were set up to record the band, Lori would disappear or become incoherent. He would tell the LA Times, we tried at least three producers before Bill Price. For the label to spend $300,000 on a project, the act better be in shape. Frustrated, Lori would set up a meeting with Zutat at Geffen's offices. When she arrived for the meeting, she was drunk, and when Zutat called her in, he would recall to the LA Weekly, I was just like, F this, and I jumped on his desk and was like, you f me over, you f my band, you're an effer, how dare you keep me on hold, and I pissed on his Rolodex, his phone, photo of his wife, and everything. But instead of screaming at me, he started to cry. The next eight months saw the band fight with Geffen to be released from their contract, and Rolling Stone would remark at the time, talk about being pissed at your record label. These types of quips made by the press annoyed Laurie, telling the LA Weekly, it was heartbreaking. If so, it made me have a distaste for everything that I was naturally supposed to do and I just quit, moved back home. It was back home in New Jersey that she found sobriety and eventually apologized to Zutat for the incident. She would leave the music industry for several years and found a job as an illustrator for the New York press. By the mid-90s, she would befriend and collaborate with Jeff Buckley. Lori would end up putting out a solo record in 1999 titled Transcendental Medication. The album would feature the track She's Not Your Friend, which featured lyrics taking aim at Courtney Love, while also possibly questioning Love's involvement in her husband Kurt Cobain's death. According to Kerrang! Magazine, Lori would be quoted as saying, The whole difference between me and Courtney is I never wanted to be a star. When asked whether the feud with Courtney Love was over, saying Courtney has no credibility musically and no one takes her seriously. She's actually a really good actress when she's playing roles that are really just herself. She's played a stripper. Well, she was a stripper for years and years. She has a personality who has to make it no matter who lives or dies at any cost. Vanity Fair would profile Courtney Love and her husband Kurt Cobain in 1992 and would briefly mention Inger stating, she referring to Courtney Love is convinced that everyone in the music scene today is either plundering her shtick or just plain worthless. She hates Inger Laurie, the lead singer of the Nymphs, who she refers to as effing despicable. Despite making amends with Tom Zutat, Laurie became a legend in her own right, telling LA Weekly, people treated me like a patron saint of effed over musicians. They were all, you pissed on his desk, that's what I wanna do. You did that for every musician that has ever been screwed over. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll Stories. Take care.